There we go. I'm trying to get this where I can see everything. <laughs> Alright, so we're live and chat's working. Hello to. Is it Andre? Did I say that? Larry, no. I don't know. <laughs> Luby Lobster? Lo Lubby Lobster? One or the other? We don't have those, those two dots on our U's. I don't know how to read it. <laughs> Sorry. Comics and stuff back again. I seem, am I loud? I feel loud. Let me know if this is too much volume. Alrighty. Alright, so, let's see. So this is a, a promo for uh, Pensacon 2018. Uh, Pensacon is in Pensacola Beach in Florida. This is actually a famous um, sign that's in Pensacola. And um, so uh, that show is coming up in uh, next month. And it's a lot of fun. I think this is the fourth year they've done it. I've been a guest every year. I really have a good time. And uh, this was drawn by Jen Brumall. Who is awesome? Check her stuff out. I think I tagged her on Facebook and Twitter on the post, so you can find it there. So she does she does awesome work. And there's a hair on my <laughs> there's a hair on my iPad. There we go. So um so yeah, hello to everybody. And here's what we've done so far. I know you guys do not want to watch me flat this, so I went ahead and ahead and did that part. So we've got most of the background separated. Uh, when, I'm at, when my flatter did this, I sent a ton of instructions this time. So I've got um, everything broke up into the uh, the primary uh, shapes uh, just because that way I can just really quickly grab one um, character at a time if I want or I can go into the actual flats themselves, which I've uh, went through and edited and changed all those up. So the local colors are all pretty much done. Um, and so as far as layers, there's, like I said, I've got all the background separated out. I've got this, uh, what I'm calling the characters layer, which is just each character has its own, um, own color, basically. And then just the flats, and I duplicated those for the colors. Uh, this is my first time doing a piece quite like this. <laughs> that's uh, that's this full of uh, full of characters, um, and so there's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun to try to see how that's going to work out. Um, I don't. I think what I'm going to have to do, and I'll figure this out along the way here. But I'm thinking that I want to try to keep everybody as local as possible, as far as just their their base colors. There's a lot of characters here that are recognizable, you know, because of their colors in a lot of ways. Um, you know, for example, I, I can't do any strong, or I don't, I don't believe I'll be doing any strong colored light sources on this because um, there's there's so much metal and there's so many just robots that are silver and gray, you know. Um, so we'll probably keep the light and shadows pretty simple too. No real strong colored light sources or shadows. Um, that's the theory. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see if that actually, if that actually works out. So, um, so yes, it's lots of droids. Everybody is robots. And unfortunately, uh, or uh, I just, there was so many of these people that I didn't know who they were. I had to like, uh, I had to ask for, uh, I just realized I accidentally changed this at some point. Um, but yeah, I uh, I had to ask if these people were because there was a lot of uh, characters I just was not uh, familiar with at all, and so yeah, we'll see what this looks like. I'm just gonna change the base colors on this real quick. There we go. All right. Where to begin? <laughs> 
All right, so I guess I'm just gonna start, um, I'm gonna keep the background very, very simple because again, this is just, um, there's a lot going on. I don't wanna muddy it up by doing a bunch of clouds or anything crazy in the background. So, um, probably gonna just go, you know, bright day type sky, very subtle gradient probably and maybe a little bit of fluffiness and there's something but in the clouds or not really clouds but some cloud-like textures maybe and uh, if you guys have questions I will try to keep one eye on the chat and um, we'll see how it goes uh, do you flat the background the characters on the same layer um, they the flats are on the same layer with everything else but I do have this the background separate as well and I usually don't do this in Photoshop but I do in Procreate just because it's faster to select it this way um, so where was I background now um, let's see Procreate actually has a cloud brush I went to turn it way down because I don't want to um, I don't really want you to even be able to tell that this was a, a stock brush. So I'm keeping it really, really loose and very, very subtle. And just kind of a light gradient at the bottom. So it's so subtle you probably can't even see it. <laughs> I guess you kind of can a little bit. So let's just go ahead and do the background first. And for, um, let's see, there's a lot of, let me just this down. There's a lot of um, organic brushes in Procreate that I really haven't played around with yet. Just trying, I'm kind of testing things out here. This sable brush is kind of cool. I'm not going to be putting a ton of detail in these in this grass or anything, but I just want to um, do something with it to make it look. Um, whoops, I forgot to select it. Uh, I just uh, to make it not flat, <laughs> basically. So it's not going to be anything too crazy or anything just a little bit more light in the front and in the back and that'll probably be it And I'll probably do some shadows and stuff in the back a little bit later. We're going to add shadows later. Alright, so in order to keep from selecting a jillion colors for this, I'm going to do all the shadows, all the main shadows on one layer. I'll end up coming back over the top of this with other stuff, but this is just to get in a rough idea of what I want the shadows to look like, and then we'll, we'll tweak those later. So I'm going to make a new layer. We'll call it shadows. And I'm gonna use, so the thought process is, it's uh, everything's gonna be pretty local color here, like I said, so the, the shadow color, which I wanna sort of test out here. I'm just gonna make a selection, it doesn't matter really where, and then fill that with what I think I wanna use for the shadow color which is kind of a light blue and it's just to give me some idea of you know what that shadow is going to look like 
So that's a little bit green for my taste. So I'm going to first play around with the hue saturation. I don't want it really to be too purple either. I'm thinking like close to the sky color, almost gray. So something about like that. I can always lighten or darken this later, but that'll give us a, just a baseline to go off of. So I'm going to fill that whole layer with that color, and I'm going to create a mask. And some of this stuff will end up getting changed later. And then invert the mask. So I'm going to be coloring on a mask that has that shadow color on it. So basically with uh, this, this brush here, you see no matter what I'm uh, adding here, I'm, 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 uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add that uh, color to it. Then I can also take it away. And even that might be too blue for this, but I think it looks okay. I don't really want it to have much color in it for the reasons I talked about earlier. Your videos have helped my color theory so much. Awesome. I kind of used to hate coloring, but I enjoy it now, which is good because I have a 34-page comic to color. Nice. Very cool. So, all of the... So this is all the characters minus the background. I'm going to start, I'm just going to select that. And I've got everything now selected except for the background. So it's just kind of a cheat. It's a quick way to not worry about staying in the lines. <laughs> so, you know, I can do this and not worry about getting in the background. And... Let's see. I'm going to take some of this blue out. Bear with me just a moment. Once I get this, uh, this base color set, I'll be in good shape. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Alright, so again, select the characters, go to my mask, and just going to start at the top, work our way down. Um, I actually have, I'm probably, probably going to use this as sort of like a checklist to make sure I don't miss anybody. But I have, uh, I'll show this to you guys. I have a list, oh, I can't show that, can I? Nope, not the way I can. The way I have my monitor set up, it's on top. So I'm capturing this on my desktop, in case you were wondering. Okay, let's fix this first. So this is going to be an adventure. <laughs> like I said, this is my first time uh, really coloring something with this much going on. So we're going to do our best here and see what happens. 
and these these base colors, especially in the yellows, uh, end up looking a little too um, cool. So we'll probably end up um, shifting that a little bit later. But for now, I just want to get some rough rough stuff in here. And then I can select the black and paint away places where I want it to come back here. What type of brush am I using? Uh, this is uh, the flat marker that's included with Procreate. It's a, um, it's just a default, default brush. The, um, it's a very common question for streams I get it quite a lot um, I change brushes all the time it doesn't really matter an awful lot which brush you're using um, I wish there was like a magic brush <laughs> but yeah there's there's a lot of colors we or a lot of brushes I could have used for this uh, I just it's got a nice gradient to it um, I mean like pressure gradient so like uh, I don't have to I don't have to. I, don't, I find myself. I don't have to switch brushes as often, especially with something like this. That, that means, you know, we're talking. You know, if I had to switch brushes every time I wanted to go a little bit more subtle or something with effect or whatever, then I'd be here all day. <laughs> so, but it, it's it's a it's a nice just simple. Simple brush. It's got a little bit of texture to it. If you get really close, you know, you can see it. It's got a little bit of brushiness to it. That if I want to use, I can, or I can be harder with that, with the pressure, and and not have to worry about it. Um, there's a lot of um, obviously this is a bunch of robots. There's a lot of chrome on this. You know, there's a lot of shiny metal. So we're gonna be going back over a lot of this with highlights and all that stuff. Um, before we, uh, before we wrap it up. But for now, I'm just trying to lay in something to give us something to work off of. And all of these characters are just really, really small, you know, on the page, so there's not, uh, you know, uh, we don't have to fine tooth comb every little section because we can kind of be rough with it just because of the size that things are. Um, Yep. Thanks for coming.
And with the the more like cartoony type characters, you know, I'm gonna I'm leaving I'm gonna leave the the shadows really simple on those. You know, I don't want it to look like it's like I'm not going to start doing like a you know a ton of rendering on a real cartoony character because I want to keep the whatever whatever the the feel of the of, of the character you know um, Uh, what tablet am I using right now? This is an iPad Pro. This 13, 13 inch, 12.9, whatever the, whatever that size is. I had someone last stream ask, like, how do you know where to put the shadows? Um, no matter what shape I'm looking at, I'm, I'm trying to break it down into more basic shapes. You know, cubes and spheres and, you know, um, cylinders, all that kind of stuff. Because um, if you look at every part like that, then it doesn't, it doesn't get quite as complicated that way. You know, and just about any shape, no matter what it is, you can break it down into something much simpler, or or, or something close to that being like that. And that way, you're, um, you know, you can figure out how the light hits a, hits a simpler shape than than a complex one. So. So like this neck here, I'm kind of thinking about that as like a big wide cylinder, you know? Procreate looks like a powerful app. Procreate is my new favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I actually, um, since you asked, um, I, I just, uh, or since you said, you didn't ask, did you? Um, since you mentioned Procreate, I actually just yesterday launched a, like a beginner's guide to Procreate course. Um, if you go to that website right there, it's kind of a temporary website. <laughs> You don't have to go right now, but it's uh, it's just putting together all my courses in one place. And uh, uh, for now, I, I, I'm working on everything that I had set up. You know, all my website and the, the all my course hosting and all that has has been around um, you know coloring. And this is the first one that isn't about coloring. And so you know, it's like you know, I didn't want to send people just to coloringcomics.com because it's not a coloring course. It's more of a all around beginners, you know, a beginner guide to just art in general. You know, it's very basic. You know, if you if you've got my courses already, like you're not going to learn 
you know, a ton of new stuff about coloring in there. It's really more for people that are brand new that, you know, they, they've got the iPad for Christmas or something and they heard you can make cool art with it, but to have no idea how to start, <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of the point of that. But, but now I like it a lot. I've been drawing a lot more because of it. Like, um, uh, I used to draw a lot and then got into coloring and kind of fell away from it. And now I've picking it back up again mainly because of that app, so. The, the one thing, and I, I, this stream is at 30 frames per second, but the one thing that I can't explain how, <laughs> how much smoother this is in real life when you're looking at it is you guys are only seeing a quarter of the frames this thing is generating. <laughs> you know, it's 120 frames per second when you're painting. And... So it's just so smooth, like it's so smooth. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. Whoops. Arnie's back. Hello. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of shiny once we're done with this. <laughs> a lot of shininess. It's going to be interesting to try to do that without making it look like a... You know, like the whole thing is glowing. <laughs> Which is... That, that, that's a really good example of, like, when coloring shouldn't be realistic. Like, realism in graphic art is pretty overrated anyway but um, I'm trying to see if Guilty Spark here has uh, if this turns up or out yeah okay I was right this kind of I couldn't remember if it was like you know went like this from the front or if it was open like that so this makes sense <laughs> this is one of the ones that I knew I was a Pretty big Halo fan back in the day, so I am familiar with 343 Guilty Spark. Is it better for you than your baby Photoshop? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Photoshop's my baby? Um, in, in a lot of ways, yes, and in some ways, no. I mean, um, and the people that come to multiple streams are going to probably get tired of hearing this, but um, Procreate to me is better at, I mean, the tablet itself is just better than anything I've ever tried to use on Windows or Mac or what, like any Wacom product as far as like the actual putting brush to paper and what that feels like. Um, it's not even close to me, like, and... So, if I'm doing something where I'm doing a lot of rendering, like this, for example, I will usually, um, you know, I'll usually grab the uh, Procreate to do most of that. Um, but there's some things it's not better at, like setting up pages. Like, I didn't flat this, you know, I paid my flatter to flat this for me, but going in and changing all the colors is still faster in Photoshop. So... I still use that most of the time for Photoshop. 
And, um, and I apologize if you guys hear that squeaking. Like, I've ordered some WD-40. I've, I've got a brace thing for my arm over here. Um, having some shoulder problems. But it doesn't like it's going to need surgery if, if you were here to hear that conversation a couple weeks ago. But um, it's still not right yet. So. <laughs> so what I've been doing primarily lately is doing all of the page initial setup in Photoshop and then um, I'm just moving to procreate to render but it does I mean it does almost everything that I use Photoshop for like I'm not one of those people that like like there's some colorists that use a lot of like Photoshop like trickery, you know, not really trickery is not the right word, but like a lot of like super technical stuff, you know, gradient maps and, you know, I mean, I work on mask a lot. That's probably about the only thing. Other than that, I'm just like, I'm just painting most of the time or I'm just using a lasso or whatever. So, you know, if I relied heavily on like using channels or, or, you know, really complex nested layer groups and things like that, like, it probably wouldn't work for me. Um, but, like, I almost, like, my process changed. Like, I changed my process to suit Procreate. Like, that's how much I liked it. And, um, and I think it was easier for me because I haven't been doing this for 20 years, you know? Like, I've only been doing it professionally for, you know five years or so six years I don't know 11 12 started somewhere around there so you know it's like I think it's tougher for people that and I know I've said this before but I think it's tougher for artists that you know have been doing it for a long long time and they're like really married to their process and just can't fathom changing and it might not be for you you know but if you're flexible you know, there, there's some things that, uh, you know, just to me feel better on Procreate, so. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Can you elaborate more on realism being overrated? Um, Real comics are very rarely colored realistically, like because it doesn't usually it doesn't it makes the the story doesn't work usually uh, like if if I've got good examples of this all over YouTube and courses and everything else but like um, like for example you know there's probably characters on here that would that would you know like this character back here. You know, would be in shadow. They're surrounded by people, you know. Um, or, you know, that's not a great example, but, like, I'm trying to think of something that I could show you guys that um, would be a good example of this. But you're there to help draw attention to the things that need drawing attention to. So uh, a lot of times realistic lighting just doesn't do that very well. Um, and... I mean, there's places for it. There's a place for realistic art. Like, this is not like a, you know, bash realistic art thing. But um, when it comes to sequential comics, um, you know, you want your lighting to sort of make sense. But, but even with lighting, like, there's things that happen all the time and with the way things are, are lit and the way things are shaded that it's, it's, it's nowhere near what reality would be, but it serves the story better, you know. So, it's a hard thing to kind of wrap your head around without looking at examples. I really don't have time to pull anything up right now. And this is this is a big uh, <laughs> this is a big project. So, um, if I get done and I've got a little bit of time, I'll try to show you guys some actual examples of that. Um, but like I can think off the top of my head of, and I'll just show you guys this real quick. Um, I don't know if I can show any of that stuff. No, probably not. <laughs> Let's just do this. New. 
We're going to make this fast. All right, so I can think of an example of a panel I did a couple months ago for, for, um, for Postal, where, like, here's the panel, and it was nighttime, and there was, there was a, a guy, like, there was a door open on this side. We were kind of looking through the door, and, like, here's the other side of the door. And the inside was like a, like a restaurant, and it had tables and things and stuff, and a lot of little details all over the place, right? And the focus of the panel, which was this, um, you know, girl that's standing over here in the dark. Yeah, you know, she do it like that, like right here, okay? And she wasn't even in the center. It wasn't even like that. She's just like over here somewhere. So like, if I just glance at that panel, and if if I did it realistically. You know, the girl's going to look like this, okay? Like, she's in the dark. Like, you know, you're not going to be able to see her. So, instead, there was the, you know, magical kind of light from outside uh, over here somewhere that's that's throwing, you know, just the right amount of light on her, and then you zoom out, and all of a sudden, you know, she you can see her <laughs> in the panel. So, like, now, realistically, if there was really a light outside... You know, everything else would be lit up, too, and she would get lost again. So, like, it's totally a cheat, you know, to, like, light her in a way that, you know, makes it work for the story's sake. And so that's what, like, that's a really rough, quick example that's very basic of what I'm talking about. Do you have any traditional art, and if so, have you ever showed it? I would love to see the difference in the outcome. Not really. Um, I, I mean, the only time that I ever, like, really draw anymore is at conventions, and I'll do, like, silly sketches and, you know, cartoony stuff, the stuff that I'm good at. <laughs> or that's not even good, the stuff that I'm, like, decent at. And, um... You know, I'll, I'll do that kind of stuff. Um, I don't really have, like I said, I can't really, can't really show you at the moment, but, but it's, um, whoops. But it's like, it's like cartoony stuff. If you, if you go to, if you go to my website, which, not the one that's up here where the courses are, but it's comiccolor.com, um, and look back, uh, let's see, this would have been like post from February last year, probably. Um, you would see some, some of those like sketches and stuff. I think I did some of those last year. I can't remember. It may have been the year before that. Or my Facebook page, I think I've got some of that stuff on there. And hit all the new people. Jigsaw Nairain, maybe? I don't know how you say that. Keeman, Keeman's back. Hello. Is this screen frozen? I think the screen's frozen. Okay, bear with me just a moment here. All right, let's restart this app. I th for some reason, when you when you leave um, the app you're recording, a lot of times it freezes. I don't know why it does that, but should be back right about now. There we go. So I'm capturing this on my 
desktop. There we go. Sorry about that. So if you're just joining, this is um, just doing a lot of basic shadows right now. This is um, we're going to come back over a lot of this stuff with some some brighter highlights and things. So we're getting there. And if you've just joined, like uh, like I said, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. I'll check the chat every few minutes. Let's see, this guy is so round. <laughs> I don't even I don't want to put any hard edges on him. So uh let's let's do let's see first let's do some wait a minute, let's see, select make sure you got the right thing selected. Alright, so I'm gonna do some harder shadows just along the edge. And then I'll come back with like, actually just where the cast shadows are basically. That's the only place where you would get like, any like hard line edges on him. can we do this? Let's see. So if I switch to like a freehand lasso and then like just circle the place where I, I want to contain what I'm about to do and then get a soft brush with a big gradient on it and do that. And I'm going to do the same thing 
along this, so like this whole area. There we go. Will this party be here in about a half hour? Yeah, probably so. Do you think everyone should go to art school if they want to get into comic book art? Why or why not? Um, no, I don't think I don't think you should go to art school <laughs> for comics. Um, I mean, let me take that back slightly. Um, if if you're relying on art school to like get you there completely, I would say no. Like if you're starting at zero, you have no, like, uh, you know, like you have no background in art whatsoever. Um, you know, maybe. Um, but nobody, like nobody in industry, cares if you have an art degree or not. Like they just don't. Um, I've never been asked to like show a resume, you know. Um, so I don't know that. I mean, that said, I mean, I do know a lot of, um, I do know a lot of artists that went to art school and they've had, you know, made successful careers out of it. So, you know, but as far as like needing it, um, I mean, I don't know that I would say need it. Um, but if you don't have the skills and you're not really like a self-starter, like if you need the motivation, then maybe you do, you know. Um, so that's that's my take on it. There's just so much information online now, like freely available. And Sorry, I'm trying to soften this up a little bit here, a little bit more. I didn't like my hard edges at all. <laughs> but, like I said, get a second opinion on that. <laughs> like, don't let me, like, destroy your art school dream or anything. Um, I just, um... The only, like... The only like official, um, what you call it, formal instruction I guess that I've ever had was um, that's the wrong color. Was back when I was like twelve or so, I think twelve or thirteen. Some of you guys, probably most of you guys, gonna be too young to remember this, but there used to be this this guy uh, or this school. Art instruction schools, I think they're based out of, like, Minnesota. I don't even know if they're still around or not. But um, he would come on the TV and go, he had a weird voice. He would, do you like to draw? Like, that's how it started. Do you like to draw? And then he would get into his spiel about this correspondence course. And I was one of the youngest people to ever graduate, is what they told me. I was, like, 12 or 13. And... I learned a good bit, um, 
because I was young, uh, and so there was a lot to learn. But, um, but anyway, I did that. But it really like high school art classes stuff like that like wasn't like wasn't useful for me. It just um, I'd been drawing since I was like could hold something to draw with. So the kids in I mean this sounds like braggy. I don't like mean this to come out this way, but kids in the class would like come to me with questions instead of the teacher. I just had a bad teacher too. I mean he wasn't bad, he just I don't know. But anyway, um I just uh, most of what I learned I learned from books. And then once I was like a adult, YouTube came around. I started learning a lot from YouTube and online. You know, even pre YouTube, you know, there were blogs and stuff people were putting together. Um, I'm terrible at talking and working at the same time. Have you guys figured this out yet? <laughs> I'm all over the place trying to figure out what in the hell I'm doing. Um, so anyway, I don't know. There's a lot of good art teachers out there. It's not like to bash art teachers either, but like I just didn't really have great ones. It's a really really small town, small school. You know, we just didn't have probably didn't have enough of a of a base to choose from. You know. Uh, what color? I, I don't watch Doctor Who. I know this is from Doctor Who. I just want to double check these colors. He's like gold everywhere, right? Let's change that. The only reason that I know what this is is from conventions. Like... <laughs> Like I see someone's driving one of these things around like every convention I've ever been to and I've so I figured out who it is. And I'm not knocking Doctor Who fans. I just I tried. I tried to watch Doctor Who. I tried multiple doctors. <laughs> I just could I could not uh I just couldn't get into it. And I guess I guess it's really a kid show like I mean it's kind of like I like you know, there's a lot of stuff that gets made today that started for kids that adults like. Like, I'm a, you know, a lot of, even, even like things like Star Wars and stuff. I mean, they, they throw stuff in there that's obviously for kids. Um, even though Star Wars fans are now probably like average 40 years old, about my age. I know this is Johnny Five. Remember this guy? What was the name of that movie? Short Oh, Short Circuit. That's what it was. There's so many questions I'm ignoring. I'm sorry. Do you... Let's see. Hold on. Do you do any type of setup for color knowing that this is going to print? Um, not really anything specific other than, you know, avoiding really dark colors and avoiding colors that have too much black in them because that stuff doesn't print well. Um, other than that, I mean, I color the same way all the time, whether I'm, whether it's for the internet, whether it's for a print, whatever. Like, I color everything as if it were going to print because, to me, there's no point in not doing that. Like, that's my two cents, anyway. The, um... He's got so many hard edges. I'm just not. I just selected him instead of trying to stay inside the lines. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, color, color for print. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I always color as if it's going to print. That way, if it is printed, I'm okay.
How much of a coloring, how much coloring a page cover is planned before starting versus playing with what works? I assume this changes as one gets better, but maybe a general idea. Uh, that's a great question, and you would probably get a different answer from everybody you ask. But for me, um, I learned early on like not to get attached to anything as you're working on it, <laughs> because like I like me, I would prefer to like work on it and build up on it, and I might go back and change things, and I might throw some effects over the top or some adjustment layers or something. So I'm always thinking about the overall, you know, picture of what's happening. Um, but at the same time, um, I'm always open to changing what's going on. It, it took me a while to learn that because, like, I was used to drawing traditionally for the longest time, and so I would think that everything that I'm going to put down, you know, has to stay there. And I kind of had to get out of that habit for me. Now, uh, now I'm, one of my favorite colorists, um, who, if you follow me at all, you know that I, uh, I talk about him all the time, is uh, Marta Gracia. Now, like, what he does, he just lays down the color he wants, <laughs> and there's almost never, not that I can see any kind of big sweeping adjustments, you know, contrast and different things, like, like what he chooses is what ends up on the page most of the time. Um, so, like, I, I mean, I try to work that way, but I used to try more to work that way, but not anymore. It's just... Um, I mean, it's not like I go into it completely blind either. Um, you know, something like this is a little bit different because, um, like, my iPad doesn't want to zoom right now. Um, let's undo that. There we go. So, like, this piece is so unique because I need, like, everyone to be visible, and I'm not, like, it's not like, like, this would be totally different if, like, Mega Man was the focus of this piece, you know? It would, it would, you know, everything else would be less saturated, would be a little darker. He'd be surrounded by more bright values. Like, I would make him the focal point. Um, so those sort of decisions are made early. But as far as the execution of how I go about actually doing that, kind of ju just along the way. I mean, there was a piece, um, I'll show you real quick, actually. This one here. Like, I streamed this a week or two ago, and, like, it was almost done until I got to the end, and I didn't like the sky, and it ended up, like, really brightening the sky considerably than what you guys are seeing here, and it completely changed the look of the page, and it did what I wanted it to do. What it was is everything was dark, and the sky was a little too dark, and it was, there wasn't enough contrast. So, like, um... So I, I'm not uh, I'm not afraid to, you know, make changes, you know, toward the end or make adjustments and things like that. But I usually have some idea about, you know, I want this character to be more visual, you know, uh, you know, drawing your attention. I want this to kind of get pushed back into the background. You know, those kind of decisions I make, and then I kind of, you know, trip through it <laughs> going forward. So let's see. Where was I? Wally. He's going to need some work, too, and his colors. They're just kind of rough colors in here. I'm going to end up making him look a little bit more like he does later. This is probably, this is definitely not like a finish in a day type stream. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I, I do want to try to at least get the shadows done and probably start doing some some rough highlights maybe that's the theory anyway so um... hope that answers the question Love the MST3K characters in the front. Yeah, that was a cool idea. And again, I didn't draw this. This was drawn by Jen uh, Brumall, just to remind everyone. But I am coloring. Is it, let's see, is it, it's so much to reference online about drawing? It's probably there so much 
is that, what is it saying? To reference online about drawing and coloring nowadays, all it really takes is dedication and a comfortable tablet and software. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there. You're right about attending art school for comics. If you have the basics, you can start from there and improve. Watching KMR is my art school. Yay! Love to catch you live. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. Alrighty. I'm surprised this is even keeping your guys' attention. Because this is... To me, like, this right now, and this is something that comes with time, but this is total autopilot. Like, I am... <laughs> I mean, this sort of stuff, I'm not thinking about, you know, exact colors, because I'm not, you know, I'm just playing in shadows. Um, so, like, there just isn't much brain power <laughs> going into what's happening at this point. There will be later highlights. I have, I'll have to be a little bit more... Um, uh, focused on because I got to figure out how to make these work without competing with everything else on the page. So that'll probably take a little bit of thought, but these are pretty simple shadows kind of from the front and the top. So there's, it's just not really a, um, enthralling, um, way of working probably, but I don't know who this is. Let's see. I've got like a I've got a guide over here. Tweaky. I have no I have no idea who this is. I'm guessing an old TV show or something. Someone someone older than me, tell me. <laughs> someone that knows what's going on. We're trying, we, we're trying to cover all of our bases, it looks like, with this print. We got our all, uh, all age groups. <laughs> and see, even like this little bit right here, we're going back to that realism talk earlier. Like, this shadow on her is, like, on the front, on the left right here, is probably not realistic but I need I need BB-8 here to stand out a bit more and if, if I left it that same color then you know he wouldn't stand out quite as much so it's kind of a, again that's kind of a, 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 a technique to help draw attention to different things Let's see. Oh, the screen is locked again. Sorry, let's figure that out. Okay, bear with me just a moment here. The software I'm using, like, I don't, uh, Apple, um, not Apple. A PowerSoft Phone Manager is, is what this is called. I don't know. It feels a little janky at times, but it does work well most of the time. So, yeah, let me know if, if that happens.
let's see. Yeah, no one in the chat knows who these are either, I don't think. <laughs> or at least who I asked about earlier. Alright. Let's see. Ultron. Sometimes when I try to, like... Uh, zoom, I'm accidentally like making marks. Doesn't happen often, but. We'll chrome him up later, too. I think that my... I think they might need to clean this screen real quick. I'm having a hard time getting the uh, touches to register. Okay, I'm going to... Let's see, I don't think this will... I'm trying not to touch the screen so it doesn't sling it everywhere. I've noticed that if you go too long without cleaning it, like you're, you need the oil from your fingers, will stop picking up right. Oh, this is not centered. There we go. Oh, Buck Rogers. Okay, cool. I knew it had to be one of those old old TV shows. No C-3PO. All right, he is so surrounded by other people. I'm going to select him out separately. I'm really glad that I set this page up like that. Because <laughs> this would have taken forever to, like, separate all that stuff out. Make his eyes glow later. And some of these, even with metal, you know, some of these are going to be more, you know, glossier than others, you know. Like, he's super shiny, but he's not as shiny as, you know, R2 is. So I'll keep that in mind. So even with, with metal, you've got varying levels of gloss, you know. Mm. 
And again, if you guys have, if you've just joined, I don't, I don't know who's coming and going, but if you have questions, feel free to ask. Let's see, who is this? I know it looks familiar. I should know who he is. <laughs> I thought I saw him in my reference here somewhere. Oh, Battlestar Galactica. This guy. This is another show I never watched. He is very shiny. Yeah, I don't know who this blue guy is either. <laughs> Number 16 on my list. Helper? Oh, from Venture Brothers. Okay, I think I've watched like maybe one episode of that show. Alright, and this... This is Danger Will Robinson. I remember that. <laughs> Alright, and... Yeah, he looks a little bit simpler than he's going to also. Like, he'll have... have lots of lights and glowy things. Like that head is actually like glass, it looks like. So, we're supposed to look like glass or something. But We'll fix all that later. Yeah, th these these are the people I have no clue about. Let's see. Like these dogs look familiar, but I don't know who they are. Let's see. Trash can from Astro Boy. Okay. And K9 from Doctor Who. Okay. Another Doctor Who. Dude here. Is that it? Almost? This guy. Who is this guy? Another one that looks old. 39. Oh, did the day the Earth stood still. Yeah, I should know this stuff. I'm actually a pretty big sci-fi fan. There's just a lot of, a lot of old shows that I never got into.
Okay, so first pass on Shadows looks like it's finished. Uh, there's the truck back here, I forgot about. Uh, let's see. He's way back here in the back. Like, and th this is a blue that's probably too saturated, but it's so far back here. Alright. So that, that helps tie it together a little bit. I, I was really concerned before I started this if that, it, when it was colored, like I don't want it to look like a big fruit salad, you know? So that does help tie it together some, and then the, the highlights will help too. So, um, what is this sign made of? Hold on one second. It's a cola beach sign. Okay, so the sign is actually like lit. Maybe. Yeah, the sign totally lights up. So what I will probably do here is just some really, really subtle glows on it let's see and get this where you guys can see it that's the uh, that's the sign in reality so it is uh, it is lit up so We'll probably all these little lights. No, I didn't want to do that. Windows, wrong button. Yeah, see all those little red lights. We'll definitely add some of those in there. Maybe not quite that many. <laughs> we'll make it a little less gaudy in reality or in whatever we're doing here. All right. I don't want to do the sign right now. The sign's going to be kind of boring. So um, I do want to change this arrow to red before I forget about it. So let's see. Okay. If we, I'm thinking here. Um, oh, I didn't do rosy. I need to do rosy. Um, let's see. I knew I was forgetting someone. I knew I probably would. Okay. I'm still, I'm just trying to figure out where to go next. There's so much going on here. I want to see what like a really subtle glow over the uh, sign will do.
probably end up toning this down. We could even like, I wonder what this will look like at night, like if we changed it to night. I don't want the print to be like dark though, you know what I mean? This doesn't look bad. I can always turn it down. Uh, and I'm probably, I might, depends on what it looks like after, after I've done some more highlights. I don't want it to like overpower everything, but it might give us like a, a nice focal point. If this looks goofy when I'm done, we'll s <laughs> I'll undo it. I've got this sign up over here on my other monitor, so. Nah, it looks cool. I like it. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's see. Question, are the art tips you offer in your classes carry over to other art apps? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, most of this stuff, the, um, you know, I said the sign was gonna be boring. I don't think it is. I think it's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna do it real quick. <laughs> the, um, uh, what was the question again? Uh, other art apps. Yeah, I mean, all this stuff, I mean, honestly, I like, had um, the first week that I got this tablet, like I tried so many apps, and a lot of them. I mean, of course, they have different things that they're good at and whatever. But like, you know, I've colored pages in Clip Studio. I've colored pages in Procreate. Um, you know, obviously Photoshop and all that. Um, the the storytelling stuff it doesn't matter you know if if you want even today like if you were to tell me I want to color comics professionally with Procreate I'm going to tell you to take the Photoshop courses <laughs> like first because even I'm I'm basically just using Photoshop as the tool you know it's you know separating foregrounds and backgrounds and separating planes and um, you know drawing the eye around the page and all that stuff is the most important aspect of coloring okay and whether you're doing it in Photoshop or whether you're doing it in Procreate or Paintstorm or whatever like all of that's the same okay um, that stuff is the exact same thing. And the Photoshop courses, the first one definitely focuses more on, I mean, it gets into all the technical details and whatnot, but 
it's it's primarily um, the goal with that was to get a storytelling course up because there's not a lot of stuff out there about that stuff like I'm saying stuff a lot <laughs> um, but yeah And I don't know how familiar you guys or where you're coming from, if you know me from YouTube or whatever, but if you're if you wanna learn a lot more about that stuff, just go to YouTube. I've got like a hundred and seventy videos now, I think, on there. Do I want to go through all of these and do this? Probably not little bright spots ah uh, I think it'll be too distracting that's good that works all right what are other questions uh, what case do you recommend for artists on the iPad Pro 10 mine sucks I need a new one um I don't know what this is. Oh, sorry. Um, I have no idea what type, what class, what what kind of case this is. Um, I don't know. It's like fake leather. You know, it's got a kickstand. That's all I. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I'll have to look it up later. Yeah, a lot of that's just personal preference. You know. It's, Let's see. All right, so for these highlights, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to fill it with like, let's try this. Do I want yellow or blue? I think I want blue. So it's like a very, very, very light, bright blue. I think. <laughs> I can always change this later. All right, so, and it's in Add mode. Add mode is like, I, just, I don't know, it, it's it's really only good for high, highlights to me. Like it's so over the top in, um, in how much like brightness it adds. Like it's really really strong. Like about like that. Okay, so. Same thing, I'm going to mask that off, I'm going to invert it, and see what this looks like. I'm starting to get it full opacity, and we might end up changing it. Um, let me go ahead and just select the characters again, so we don't have to stay in the lines. <laughs> get on the right layer. I'm actually going to use, I'm going to switch to the pencil. It's got a, a little bit more, I don't know, it's got a little more control. And um, maybe I don't want any color in this at all. Let's see. I'm thinking. Did 
So this is the part where I experiment. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to put down some... colors and then I'm going to play around with the hue saturation on this yeah I think like a yellow RNG sun is going to be better than this blue something like that Oh crap. Bear with me. I messed up my layer here. So this like funky mustardy color is actually what I'm going to use in add mode to try to light this, see what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's going to work better. Okay, and I'll probably, probably end up toning this down, because it's going to be, um, It's going to be pretty white. This is still not right. <laughs> Hold on. Alright, screw this. Layer. Delete. Uh... Okay, one more time. Alright, mask and invert. Make sure I'm on the mask. Make sure I got the right brush. Make sure I select my characters. probably far too much detail for this distance. <laughs> I'm not going to do all, all, all of the uh, all of it. Just the most important parts, faces, and things. He's way out there. And I can always, uh, I guess I can always edit this later shift that color around yeah this is this ad mode is like super bright <laughs> like look at the opacity over here uh, where is it at terrible at this right there somewhere in there I guess really low opacity and it's still pretty uh, pretty intense so use add mode sparingly
Yeah, the contrast is a lot better now. Yeah, the light's making this look a lot better. Let's see, looking at colorist brilliant works, I believe that they should come next to the pencilers when paying them for their work. <laughs> you think colorist work is a little underestimated? Uh, yeah, it still is. Um, but to say they should be, to say that they should be paid the same for pencilers is even for me I think it's a little too strong because or a lot too strong <laughs> because if we're talking about like page rates, you know, a, a colorist will knock out you know five, six, seven, eight pages a day, you know, working full time, you know, long days. Um, that's extreme probably I would say most you know probably do four or five a day maybe um, whereas a penciler is is amazingly fast if they can do two you know I mean I'm all for you know more recognition <laughs> but the page rates are uh, I mean they can be better uh, I'm not not saying that but um, the companies I work for though I, I feel uh, I'm I'm, I'm paid very fairly, so I can't really complain. But, um, but yeah, overall, um, definitely, uh, I'm with you on the credit thing and royalties and that kind of stuff. It's still, still behind the behind the curve a bit. Yeah, that'll probably work. It's got a little bit harder edge to it, so. Or at least I can make it look like it does. I cannot figure out what's happening. I think my iPad is acting up on me. It's not wanting to undo when it's supposed to be undoing.
I knew this was going to be a long piece, and I think I underestimated even that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Those of you that I'm missing your goodbyes. <laughs> I see penciled or ink pages looking so dead, then comes a colorist, and the whole thing is live. We definitely appreciate colorists a lot. Good. Thank you. It is appreciated. <laughs> And the cool thing about, I've figured out about add mode, is you can kind of use it almost like a bounce light, just by lowering the opacity. So like this is not, these lights down here are not quite as, um, it's not quite as intense. So it sort of looks like a bounce light. I mean, it, it is a bounce light. I don't know why I said sort of. <laughs> Alrighty. And like this, I pretty much want to be white, so I've got it turned all the way up. As far as the opacity, I mean. You just have to be really careful though with, with add mode because like I said, it, it gets really, really intense. Like, um, if you're not careful, so. Uh, let's see, in order to, I want to, I want to order the mount you use for your Cintiq. How is it? Can you rotate it, etc. cetera? Uh, how is it? Well, I don't, I don't use it anymore, but it did work pretty well. Um, it was very sturdy, and I don't remember if you can rotate it. I think you can. The guy that makes those mounts is very responsive to questions, too, if you want to ask him. But it's, it's very well built, though. This must be a robot theme. <laughs> we have Sherlock Holmes in our midst. Sorry, <laughs> that was smart ass. But yeah, yes, it is a robot theme. Um, thank you so much for your stream and for answering your questions. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> a whole bunch of people left recently, so I've scared off someone. I'm back to my yellow light for these. These guys. So these guys are blue. So if I'm, um, I don't know if I'm like, from a color theory standpoint, if it like is technically correct. I just think it works well enough 
for me. And it looks cool. I'm trying to find these guys. I'm going to put a layer on top and just call it, i uh, rename this to OP for over paint. And it's just going to be details of things that I want to go ahead and do and not forget about. probably should go ahead and start doing the glows on these guys as I come across them. Do, 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 do. That way I don't have to like go back through over and over and over. Let's see, it seems like your iPad is at 75%. Would that be about right? 75%... What are we talking about? Oh, um... Oh, the, the brightness. Yeah, for me it's set around 60 or 70% or so. Um, something like that. Oh, um, I haven't, I, I know you guys are going to shoot me, but I haven't seen this movie. Um, let's see, is it, like, is it, I don't even know what color it is, and it's not that color, I don't have the S in my reference. Iron Giant S on chest. <laughs> Should probably watch this movie, huh? I think I don't watch it because I heard it was really, really sad, <laughs> and I don't. I, I'm not good at sad movies. It doesn't like glow or anything. It doesn't appear to anyway. Yeah, I'm just really confused now. Like, is this like... Somebody explain the S. Is this like a Superman S, or is it... Do they get the rights to that, I guess? <laughs> there we go. He has his S.
All right, so if you're watching this on the recording that will probably eventually be on YouTube, <laughs> this is day two. And if you're watching it live, hello. Let me know if you guys can... Are you able to see anything moving? Because my... My screen's showing that it's frozen over here. I just want to make sure that it's working before I get started. Hello to Satan Wolf and White Rain X. Okay, good. As long as it's working for you guys. Okay, so I picked up where we left off yesterday, which was starting to put some details on these guys and some highlights and some glows and all that fun stuff. I can't remember, does she have some sort of um, like zappy power or something? It looks like she's touching this sign and she is, I need to fix that. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna do this like she's zapping this sign here and if I'm wrong I apologize <laughs> Someone asked me yesterday about the iPad stand, and if the screen flips, it'll be back. Hold on. Um, it is a pro case, like fake leather thing, but it's got um, it adjusts at a couple different angles. I've got it sitting on a. Um, big Marvel encyclopedia <laughs> thing. A visual chronicle, actually. So, um, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, Aramis, what are you doing? My cat has decided to try to tear up the carpet. All right, where was I? Excuse me. There's more people than I thought it would be here this morning. <laughs> it's too early for this. But honestly, the main reason I'm doing it this early is because the uh, the football <laughs> football game started. Well, no, they don't. Maybe they don't start at noon today. I don't know when they start. I think they start at noon. Somebody figure out 
<laughs> somebody, somebody double check for me and see when the American football NFL playoffs start. Uh, let's see. Would you recommend the 12 inch over the 10, or is the 10 fine for color work? Um, it's it's really totally personal preference. I um, I mean the 13 is a good size to me, or 12.9 or whatever. Um, I don't think I would like working on a smaller one, but you know, I mean, if you find if you find that it works for you, then you know, go crazy. So this Sentinel, let's do, let's do this. Okay, so I've just selected the Sentinel and think yeah so like when you hit the select button I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see this oh, this thing is not at all centered on the screen sorry I'm capturing this on my desktop <laughs> there we go sorry let me know if that accidentally bumped that again but um but the little two lines um, I don't know if you guys can see where I'm whoops see where I'm pointing but uh, at the bottom right below the uh, Big Hero 6 guy there's two little lines and if you hit those two lines it will copy the selection to uh, a new layer and then I'm just gonna alpha lock that so I can't color outside of that and Too hot, too hot.
let's see. Do you think... Oh, there's a lot of chat going on. Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to keep an eye on this. Uh, do you think Pro Procreate will completely replace Photoshop for you in the future? Um, probably not completely. It, um... It, it's pretty darn close right now. Uh, <laughs> hello, Michelle. Um, hello. Um, I mean, it's replaced everything except my page setup process, basically, and uh, base colors and stuff. And there's, I've got so many actions and tricks and shortcuts and stuff in Photoshop that I don't, I don't know if it'll ever get to that point. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, hey, you probably don't remember, but I commissioned you to color a piece for me to banner. Yeah, it was the it was the guy with the uh, uh, I remember it. I can see it. It was like your like a bus shot, and your hand was doing something. I do remember this. <laughs> green green shirt or some orange in it or I can't remember. But there was. Uh, I think it, I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Du -du -du -du. My like completed projects folder has gotten insane. There's no telling. <laughs> I've got it somewhere. But yeah, I do remember. Oh, didn't it have a dog in it? It had like a little black dog. Yeah, there we go. I just scrolled down and saw the pug. Yeah. I do remember that. That was fun. Yes, it's not morning for everybody. It's morning for me. It's mid-morning. Hello, John. It's 2 p.m. in Brazil. I just want to thank you since watching your videos. My coloring has changed so much. So many improvements all down to you sharing your amazing abilities. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for saying so. <laughs> oh, my eyes have been gone. Um, I should probably color some here. But yeah, um, my eyes are terrible. I was the. Um, that's a pretty funny story. The. Um, I think it was fourth grade. Um, there was uh, like the Lions Club. I don't know if that's I don't know what if that's like a regional thing or a national thing or what, but they were coming around. I don't even know who they are or what they do, but uh, they were coming around and doing um, like you know eye checks for for kids or whatever. And they had like a, 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 a like a van or a big not a van but like a big trailer thing. And uh, they just brought kids out of class, and and then they'd go, um, you know, they'd go get their um, their eyes checked. And so I had never had my eyes checked before. And there was <laughs> so like you know they give you like the spoon, like little plastic spoon, and like you know cover your your right eye and tell us what you can see or whatever. They started with my left though, like cover your left eye. So I'm like you know doing this. And they said, you know, give us the first line you can see. And I said, where? <laughs> and the lady thought I was joking. She's like, no, we're here. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't see any. I don't see any letters. And then she's like, what about now? And she's going, no, I don't see anything. You know, what about now? I don't see anything. What about now? It keeps doing this. Finally, she's like, all right, switch eyes. And so I switch over, and like, my left eye, I could see okay, like okay. And it was the E on the chart, okay, like. I can't. I couldn't see the E with my right eye at like 10 feet or whatever, or or whatever it was, 15 feet, whatever it was. And um, so anyway, they ended up um, realizing that um, I was uh, on like 2,800 in my right eye and like 2,400 now on my left. It actually got worse, but it, I, I was close to having like some serious problems with it because. Um, there was some, I guess it had the possibility of like going lazy, you know, because they were straining against each other so hard. So like, uh, so that was, that was kind of insane. Um, but I found that I couldn't see. So I got glasses for the first time in like the fourth, 
fourth grade, I think. And um, I wore glasses for a long time, switched in and out of contacts, and finally, like, went back to contacts again. So I know that was a super exciting story. <laughs> And I always slow down when I start talking because I'm terrible at. I don't want to reference this. There we go. What are these things called? The Doctor Who machine things? <laughs> I'm terrible with Doctor Who references. I have like reference material and names for most of these guys over here. Sorry, I'm trying to arrange my desktop over here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, so they're like shiny, shiny gold. I learned a lot from you. I bought your courses, learned a lot, learned all I could. Thanks that I got into coloring professionally. Thanks to that, I got into coloring professionally here in Brazil. Really? That's awesome. I need to like, I want to do a YouTube video pretty soon. Or uh, send an email out or something. I don't know. I need to figure. I, I want a list of everyone that has like taken the course and gone on to actually like get professional work. I, I know it's it's. I mean, I I know of probably five or ten people, but I keep hearing uh, you know from people all over, and like that's amazing to me. Like that's really really awesome, and. uh yeah, so thank you for letting me know that. There's a, I, there's a couple of, I know there's a, there's at least one uh, other Brazilian that I know about, or a couple other Brazilians. Um, and there's, there's a guy in Italy. There's several. There's two or three I know of in the states. It's hard to, uh, I, I, you know, I, I get, some people bring this up every now and then, and, and I always. I have a terrible memory when it comes to names and things, so like, I need to um, I need to do do better remembering that. But I'd love to put together like an alumni list of like people that have taken the course and then gone and done cool stuff with it, or even YouTube. I don't care, you know. If you learned it from YouTube and got stuff, uh, let's see. So these guys look they're really shiny looking according to my reference over here. <laughs> I had someone so in, in, in the second course it includes a, a monthly like live class that we we meet online and people ask questions and whatnot and um, someone was asking about that and uh, and I, I think um, I, I think the question you know you know there, there's there's a lot of people that have taken these courses and 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 not everybody goes on to get pro work that'd be awesome <laughs> but um, I, I think the 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 biggest thing is there's a large percentage of the people that sign up and then realize that oh coloring's 
work. Like coloring is not just staying in the lines and, <laughs> you know, um, so, um, I think, I think there's a, there's a pretty sizable percentage that just don't realize what all goes into it. And, and so, uh, yeah, they bail out pretty early. So it's, so yeah, I mean, it's hard work. I mean, any creative career is, uh, not the easiest thing in the world, but you kind of have to, have to love it. I mean, when I realized that I was insane <laughs> was when, like, I realized that I'll be, like, between pages or between projects and waiting on pages to come in or something. And I'm, like, on Twitter looking for art to s screw around with, you know? Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> so... So yeah, there you go. Do you hesitate to color something that has a lot of penciling or inking errors in case someone associates you with those errors? Um, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Because I have asked myself that same question <laughs> plenty of times. Um, there has been work that I've turned down before just because of the quality. I'll put it that way. There's been projects that, um, you know, colorists can help a lot of, a lot of things <laughs> and, uh, can, can improve. I'll, I'll say this, you know, they can take like mediocre, me, mediocre, mediocre work and make it stronger. I don't know if they can always make it good, but a good colorist can go a long way. But if the art's like really weak, you know, there's not a whole lot of colors can do, and so that's just one of those sort of decisions you have to make, you know, I mean, um, there's really not a, I don't know if there's a, a single right answer to that, but that's, um, that's how I look at it anyway. But as far as like, I mean, it's different when you're first starting out though, you know, it's like, if it's like passable at all and you need like portfolio work like you know maybe you you know maybe you uh maybe you take it just to get get some practice you know um but uh but it's it's hard to it's hard to say for sure this Johnny 5 doesn't have any glowing does he Let's see. It's been so long since I've seen this movie. Um, no, he really, he really doesn't. Good morning, walking the dog. <laughs> Yeah, John says he took it to help with the digital painting. Um, you think it helped? Like, I, ne I never know. Like, I hope that it does. Like, cause all, especially the color theory stuff, I would imagine, would carry over. Hopefully you, hopefully you took away something from it. Uh, can someone verify that this that the video is working? I've got one person saying they can't see anything, and I just want to make sure that that's working still. Okay. Yeah, um, like refresh your screen or something, Yusef. Um, Seems to be working for everybody else, so. Um, and uh, Michelle brought up a good point. <laughs> she said her first job was 70 pages. Good grief. Uh, lots of back pain, wrist pain, but now I'm living the dream. I just love it. Um, I feel like I need to do like a PSA, public service announcement on ergonomics. 
Like, like I'm 38 years old. I just turned 38 a few months ago. And um, it is really, really important that your posture is good. Now, when you're young, it doesn't matter if your posture is terrible because you're young and your body recovers more easily. But it will get to a point to where you can't recover from it the same way. And my posture was terrible when I first started. And the last couple of years, uh, I've had to make a lot of changes. Um, I've got some pretty serious orthopedic <laughs> issues because of it. Um, so um, take care of yourself. Like look up all, all that stuff about sitting up straight, making sure your head is over your shoulders, you know, as much as possible. Um, I see so many people, I mean, I'm guilty of it a little bit on these streams trying to keep, you know, I try to keep my head back. And when I see people working like this, I don't know if you guys can hear me while I'm doing this, like you're going to cause serious, serious problems with yourself. Um, so start early. Don't do what I did and wait too long. Take care of yourselves. Um, so yeah, this message has been brought to you by YouTube Cares. <laughs> like, and and I know, like, some of you are sitting here right now, going, "Ah, oh, I'm not gonna have this problem. I'm good. I don't feel anything." You won't if you're like 20 <laughs> or 25 or even 30 for me. Like, I didn't really start having problems until my late 30s. Um, so, um, so yeah, don't do what I did. I wouldn't have listened to myself either when I was young. <laughs> so... Let's see. Absolutely, there's more than just staying in the lines, and you show a lot of good points, including color. Awesome. I'm glad you picked something up. I had an art director yesterday um, signed up for the new um, the Procreate course, and uh, that was uh, that was unexpected. Like I've had a couple of like uh, college, uh, a couple of college professors. But it, he was, I guess he was an art director for, uh, I don't remember exactly. It was like a game thing, maybe. I'll have to go back and look. But Okay, Wally. Wally is complicated, isn't he? He's like covered in rust, and he's really not this orange. He's more yellow, but we should be able to fix that. I'll probably go back and muddy them up at some point. I only have one angle on them, so over here open, so hopefully this is, this is close enough. I need like a side shot of Wally. He doesn't look right to me. I mean, my colors don't look right, I mean. Okay, so he's really not yellow up there. He's like a dusty, like brown color. Just trying to muddy them up, basically.
Oh, this chat is busy this morning. <laughs> All right, uh, I have a question. Have you used Procreate Pro? People say you can use the iPad as a Cintiq. Yeah, it's working perfectly. I don't know what Procreate Pro is. I think Procreate is just Procreate. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have tried AstroPad for uh, the iPad. It works pretty well. Like, it works okay. I'm not super impressed with it, but the wireless part is really, really shaky. Wired, it does okay. Okay, well, I'm trying to catch up here. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, Michelle says she's learned it the worst way. Yep. <laughs> I just found your channel a week ago while looking into buying an iPad Pro. Love the work. Awesome. I need Apple needs to give me like a cut, okay? Like I have had so many people I've had like three or four people in the last couple of weeks say I wouldn't buy an iPad and I because of your channel and I love it. Give me a cut, Apple. All right, uh, I appreciate you letting us be a part of your creative process. I enjoy watching and sometimes feeling inspired to get back into color at some of my scribbled pencils. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a profession for everybody. I, this started off as just a hobby for me. Like, I didn't go into it thinking that I was going to be a professional colorist. You know, it wasn't really on my uh, list of things that I expected. <laughs> So, I just want to thank you. Your coloring course is very useful. You're a great teacher. <laughs> thank you. You guys are going to make me cry. <laughs> I still need to get a drafting table or drafting stand. I'm 17. I already have pain when I work. Yeah, if you're already having pain when you're working, your 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 uh, your uh, posture is not good. The, the the just the easiest thing to remember for me is you want to look as forward as possible because the further out your head is over your neck it's just weighing and it's pulling on your on the your cervical spine and so your spine's supposed to look like this like if if your head is where my hand is then your spine should curve like you know toward the front like this and your head's here well, when your head goes forward, this curve starts straightening out. Okay? So, it's doing this number. And this is really important, so I'm going to talk about this for a second. Um, I've learned way too much about this, and we'll get back to coloring. So, it's like if here's your head, and here's your neck, it's supposed to have this little curve in it, kind of like this. Okay? And there's your nose or whatever. All right, so as your head goes down, this curve starts straightening out, right? So your head does this, and this, this, so this is your head now. You know, this gets straighter. Well, what's happening is, so like your, let me switch to a different color. You guys can see something. So like, like here's your spinal column, and you've got these um, cushions, the, the disc in between. So when everything has got the right amount of of curve in it, like this is not really a great example. There's more things in this, but you get the idea. What happens is these things start pinching like this because they're all bent forward. I'm not going to draw it bent forward, but they, they start crunching in the front. And my uh, uh, chiropractor said that he talked to us. He was a 16-year-old a that was already having um, 
and this thing just froze. Uh, I'm going to restart this real quick. Um, was already having degenerative disc issues because of looking at her phone like this all the time. So when you're looking at your phone, people are you know, they're doing this number all day. Like you're literally like destroying <laughs> these, all this stuff uh, over time. It does a lot of damage. And so, um, but yeah, people shouldn't have that sort of, um, I mean, degenerative disc disease is people that like 70, 80 year olds have. And he said because of phones and computers and all this stuff that like he's running into teenagers that are having problems with it. So no one told me this when I was 18, and if they did, I wouldn't have listened anyway. But yeah, I'm not even not even kidding. It's a mess. So anyway, that's your anatomy lesson for today. <laughs> well, that's a cool effect. I didn't accidentally. It's a Bob Ross happy accident right there. So that's like two colors in ad mode on top of each other. It looks pretty cool. Anyway, um, I work on a Wacom. I've been at it for years. I'm still trying to find the right posture to avoid pain. Um, I, I don't think that those kind of tablets are, are good for that exact reason. Like, I mean, I usually don't even work how I'm set up here now. Like, I've started either... Uh, sitting in my recliner where I can support my neck and put the thing up on a pillow, you know, or, or, or a chair or something where I can get it closer. Because you also need to keep your elbows, like, right in line with your shoulders. They should be the same. So when your arms are out here, like, it's pulling, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but it's pulling your chest forward so your chest starts getting tighter, like your, your pec muscles here, and then it stretches out all the muscles in the back that are, you know, they want to be here. They want to be, like, upright. But when you're doing this all the time, it pulls all of this, and they start getting weaker. And then your chest starts getting tight, and then your shoulders start rolling forward. And it's just like a chain reaction. Like, that's how, where I've ended up with, like, impingement problems in my shoulders and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm making jokes about everybody's age. I assume everybody in here is, I don't know how old you are, but I know there's a lot of young people in here too, so. Stretching helps a lot. I have a bunch of stretching YouTube playlists, hands. Yeah, like every, you know, 20, 30 minutes, stand up, stretch out, all this kind of stuff. It, it helps. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you get an Ergotron arm where you can like really swing it around and put it where you want it would help a lot. Um, your videos are amazing, thank you. Unlike any other videos I have viewed, yours explain the why behind what you were doing, and with that I am able to apply your advice to my work. Thank you. Thank you very much. When did this stop being a hobby and start being a profession, and how? Alright, so I'm going to try to color and talk at the same time. Um, I just... Uh, I got into it just thinking, you know, I'll color my own stuff just for fun because I've always liked making art myself and drawing and stuff. And so, um, but, uh, and then I realized like it was a job and, and that it was something that was, that was possible. And so I just started looking around like the internet for like, you know, forums and different places that were, um, you know, offering or looking for colorists and different things, and and it sort of um, sort of grew from there, I guess. Um, the um, I know that's, that's oversimplifying it, but it's for me. That's that's kind of what happened. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get the right brush here. Um, but there's no, like, there's no formula, I mean, unfortunately, if there was, then everybody would be doing it. <laughs> Follow the formula.
if anyone has already asked this, but what chair would you recommend? Um, something that's got some, like, will support your lower back for sure. Um, I like something that I can push my head back to if I want to. Because um, one of the things you can do, one of the exercises you can do, if you do notice, if you have back pain or upper back pain, is to just push your head. I don't know if you guys can see this from the front, but like, kind of pushing your head toward the back of the chair not like this way like up but you know pushing back and it, and it works those muscles you know back here up at the top which tend to get stretched out if you're doing this all the time so it's just you know I'll do that and hold for like you know a couple of seconds and try to do that throughout the day um, that's what I do anyway Let's see. Who is the little guy with the green? Let's see. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> this guy right here. I've got a picture of him, but... Okay, so Ultron's pretty shiny here, isn't he? I'm probably zoomed in way too much for this. But yeah, as far as chairs go, like, going back to that question, uh, something where you can put your feet on the ground and, you know, support yourself, and that's all I can tell you there. Uh, just curious, uh, what chair would you recommend for eating? Um, I don't know, just any old... Any old chair for eating is good with me. <laughs> when you do your flats, do you make the edges of your selections with the lasso tool anti-alias? I'm trying to get cleaner looking flats. I don't want the edges to look pixelated. If I have to flat myself, which I don't do often, but if I do, I use a custom brush that I made that is like, it's just a square. So you get, uh, I actually trace it with that, and that way I get anti-aliased edges. Um, or aliased edges, which is what you want, uh, since Procreate's lasso doesn't do that. That's what I do anyway. Alrighty, his eyes are not this color, so let's... Oh, I'm on my flatter brush. Let's <laughs> change this back. Uh, let's see.
Let's see. Also, the shiny robot from Doctor Who is a Dalek. Okay. <laughs> yep, that's it. Oh, screencast frozen again. I don't know why this app keeps doing that. There we go. Finally, someone I'm really familiar with. <laughs> and I'm still going to come back, I think, over these guys with... Um, with maybe, if I, if I have time, maybe some some bounce lights or reflected lights in a couple places just to keep it that's a maybe if I if I've got enough time to work that out it won't be everywhere but in a couple of places where especially with these characters up front where it's more obvious but a lot of these characters are so they're so small on the on the on the, on the page that you know, it's, you don't have to, like, I mean, the, the details are, uh, are going to be obscured when it's, when it's printed anyway. Uh, let's see. It's Lost in Space Robot, right? I know this one. Okay, so he's got... He's got red and yellow and all sorts of different stuff here. Oh, sorry, this is not centered. I don't know why this app doesn't remember where it opens. This is definitely too close, but I know how you Doctor Who fans are. <laughs> I better I better get this right. No offense to Doctor Who fans. I'm just gonna get this close. <laughs>
Close enough. Alrighty. Alright, so we've done... Oops, I've still got Optimus Prime over here. And he is way off in the distance. Okay, so I need to pull up. Let's see. I've got my keyboard way out of the way, sorry. Behind me over here. So if you missed yesterday's stream, this is the um, this is the sign in the background. So um, it looks like the so the blue all this stuff kind of glows, and then the arrows those probably move, right? Probably. All right. Let me get this over here. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't want to like completely obscure all of these lines. I just want to put in a couple of glowy spots. Would you recommend a pen tablet or something like a Cintiq? I'm working on Intuos Pro, but I'm considering switching to a Cintiq or iPad. Um, I, I still use my Intuos a lot, like primarily for ergonomic purposes. Like if I'm on my desk and um, I just want to, you know, uh, get some work done or my iPad's charging or something, like um, I'll I'll still use an Intuos. I've got Intuos six by eight or something so I mean that's what I used for like the first 12 years that I was working digitally so um, I really didn't get a pen uh, a, a, dis a graphic display type tablet until um, I mean I was already like getting pro work quote-unquote um, 
So um, it just depends. I mean, if you can swing, you know, one of the, um, you know, fancy tablets, then, you know, go for it. But it's not like it's going to, it's not really going to be detrimental to your coloring ability or anything, you know. This is the one thing that really bugs me about Procreate is the way that the this tool works. Like you can't just select all of it at the same time. All right. I'm just I'm putting I'm going to put a little bit of Let's see, is it? No, I think I kind of like it bright. There's one thing that I wanted to. I thought about trying yesterday and decided against it, which is seeing what it looks like with a dark sky or darker sky. I don't want the print to be like super dark though. I'll probably dump this into Photoshop once I'm done and tweak it a bit. I notice you guys are seeing this a little bit more blown out and saturated. Like it's a little bit brighter what you guys are seeing than what I'm seeing. So. If you hold down after selecting a threshold slider appears at the top. I've I've been told that before and I still can't get it to make any difference. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So All right, holding it down. I mean, it's selecting all sorts of things here. You know what I mean? Like it's not just selecting like the, I mean, it just doesn't. Like I said, if I, I, I may be doing something wrong here, but as soon as you start sliding, um, oops, Let me try this again. I mean, that's it's just no better. <laughs> so I did notice that. What did I notice? There was something yesterday that wasn't right. Uh, these things are supposed to be darker. Or at least have some darker parts on them. Alright, so, yeah, it's far from perfect. Yeah, that's an understatement, yeah. Um, 
that's my only real major complaint. If 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 it was easy enough to change the colors, then that's like one of the only things that I'm still doing in Photoshop for that reason. Um, and I've brought it up um, in the forums there, but haven't really heard anything solid. So. Um, So I think I'm going to do some, a little bit of like bounce light around. It won't be everywhere, but I think it'll make it look cool. And let's see. This needs to be low opacity. It's not going to be like everywhere, but. Some of these places that have you know big open big areas of shadow you know you would actually get reflection from the from the sky and everything else around. Because all these really dark places are actually going to, you know, the, the sun's going to bounce off of them. And all that stuff. Actually, this would be, this green would probably bounce up in here. Not quite that bright. So basically what's happening here is, in the darkest spots, the main light's not reaching it. So there's this weak bounce light from what's going on around it has actually got some room to show up, you know, because otherwise, um, usually it's too dark. I mean, usually it's too bright in, in the highlights to see. Does that make sense? It's too bright in the highlights to see the bounce light. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> The chat is quiet. So he's so chromey, I'm kind of bouncing that light off of him onto her. Same thing over here.
Oh, it's hard to see what I'm doing now. I'll try to zoom up a little bit more. Um... I'm almost done with what I was doing, but uh, so basically, like all these areas where, let me find an example. So like these yellow highlights on the robot um, behind the Dalek, it's like just bouncing off of the Dalek, basically. Um, stuff like that. Um, these little bits of green in the shadows around the grass. It's just the light bouncing off the grass. Um, actually, that's a, a good idea. So, it's like all this stuff in here, you'd actually get a little bit of reflection from the grass in these areas. So, I'm just picking a, um, uh, like a green color. This is probably too much detail for this, but this is fun. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can you guys see what I'm doing, like on the Big Hero 6 guy, like that green shadow. Especially these, like, really shiny people, like BB 8, like he would get a lot of that green in the shadows. And like the math or whatever and the geometry I'm thinking about in my head when I'm doing this is I've got think of the light from the ground as a weak light okay it's too weak to show up in the places where the Sun's hitting it so in all the places where the Sun's not hitting it you can get some of that bounce light hopefully that makes sense And when you get someone, uh, this works with skin too, but when you get into an area where you've got a really saturated color, like C-3PO for example, the light's going to come in, let me get another thing here so you guys can see this. So the light's going to come in from all these angles. Sorry, let's move this to the top so you can see. There we go. It's just not opaque enough. There we go. So the light's coming in, and the and it's you know it's a warm light, and it's bouncing off of you know it's bouncing off of his arm in all directions, and in all the places where it can repeatedly bounce off itself. So like it would bounce off his shoulder, off his you know off his face, back to his shoulder, back on his face. You know it's places where it, the light kind of gets captured, like under like in the shadows, you know, where his arm is and down here. Every time it bounces, the light captures a little bit more of that color. So if you've you've got yellow coming in or an orange light coming in and it bounces off another orange, then it's going to get more saturated. And then it might bounce off another thing that's more orange and get even more saturated. So the skin does this and things like metal would do that. So like if I color pick like one of these colors I'm using for him, but like saturate it and then add a little bit of orange to it. This should look pretty cool on him. Let's see. Actually, it could be a little bit brighter. Yeah, there we go. So like here, like his, you know, his, you know, it's bouncing off his arm back to his leg. Like all this stuff would be really, really saturated. Actually, not so much there. Let's 
see. And uh, but like on R2, you know, that's not gonna oh, reflect some of that blue here. Probably wouldn't be quite that blue, but it's good, close enough. I'm just putting some of this blue from the dog on art on C3PO. Alright, let's see. Finishing up a 40 page Kickstarter. Trying to pay attention. Nice. Very nice. I wonder how you approach a comic when you get all the pages versus a comic when you get a few pages a week. Um, it's the same way. Um, and I'm actually going to stretch for a minute, so <laughs> feel free to... Now's a good time to ask your questions. Um, but no, I don't... Um, I don't really do anything any different. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's nice if you get a whole issue sometimes because you can. I mean, if you've got the script though, you can still kind of plan out what's happening, um, how many scenes you've got, make sure you don't have any like repeating. Um, color schemes and whatnot. Um, hello, Arnie again. <laughs> How long does it take you to complete coloring of a single page? Um, do you work faster now than when you started out? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, the um, It depends a lot on the page. I mean, I would say on average between an hour, hour and a half. But then, but then you get some, you know, that are two or three hours, or even longer. <laughs> um, you get some that are faster. But for me, it's um, you know, that's that's a pretty good average. That's pretty fast though. Um, and I'm not actually done yet. Uh, but I do thank you for saying good job. But I'm I'm not actually quite finished. But um, I just need to stretch for a minute. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What was the question? Did I get faster? Oh yeah, yeah. You, like, you can't really rush that. Like, you can't rush getting faster. I mean, I mean, you can't rush the act of trying to get faster. Like, you just will. Um, and and I used to ask the same thing. You know, I would say, well, you know, how long did it take you to do a page of like? I remember asking um, Edgar Delgado that on on Twitter. He's one of my favorite colorists, and you know, and and he said I think he did three or four pages a day or something, um, maybe more than that, three, four, five, something like that. Um, and at the time, that sound that sounded really hard for me, and so um, you know, you can't really compare yourself like that when you're starting out because you're nowhere near the top of what your skill set's going to be and it, um and the more you work the faster you'll get and you'll learn all sorts of you know tricks and shortcuts and um you know like this page here you know 3 years ago it'd be 7 or 8 hours probably you know trying to pick the exact right color and and uh, for each light for every character and I would have been here for just days trying trying to finish this probably uh, maybe not three or four years probably four or five years ago and um, now you know I've, like I said I found some some ways to get faster and uh, layer methods that are a little bit different and um, so anyway um, I'm kinda looking at this piece right now trying to see like is there anyone that looks too obscured um, or doesn't look like they stand out against uh, each other like I know they're pretty crammed in here so um, you know I'm thinking I'm like I will probably brighten up Wally a little bit at the top of his head to separate him from the lady in front of him 
and maybe do a brighter light on the guy behind Johnny Five. But uh, I think I'll jump into Photoshop for the rest of this and see what it looks like and uh, take it from there. So um, let's see. I'm just going to... Uh, I'm going to pause that for a second. I just, I don't know. I never know what's going to be open in like my Dropbox. I don't want you guys to see something you're not supposed to be seeing. <laughs> so, let's see. Bear with me a moment. So, I'm usually I use either Dropbox or there's an app on iOS called... Um, file browser that will um, write directly to I'll show you what it looks like in just a second I'm just seeing if there's anything here that I can't nah, you're fine so um, there we go so I can just paste the file here now this is on my desktop and it'll think about it for a second and um, you want to know something really crazy um, sorry this is loud I've got a I didn't know this program did this my iPad was not connected to my desktop that entire time It was doing that wirelessly. That is insane. Holy crap, that's nuts. Like, I've been hooking up my, my iPad to this thing thinking it was necessary. Sorry, iPad's acting up. Uh, iTunes, go away. Leave me alone. I'm impressed with this software. Uh, I mean, yeah, the iPad is impressive, but I mean, this software is uh, iPowerSoft iOS Recorder. How in the hell was that working that quickly? That's nuts. I am genuinely shocked right now. <laughs> okay, so. Bear with me a moment. That actually works. Um, that works incredibly well. Um, I've had. Let's see. There it is. I'm trying to get this open on my desktop. Um, Okay, so now we're in, uh, I need to change my, I need to change my view here. Bear with me just a moment. There we go. We're a little, a little different. You guys don't need to see my hands anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to work on my Intuos. Okay, so we can close that down. All right. What questions am I missing? Do you recommend starting out your jump into digital drawing or start with pen and paper? Um, I don't think it really matters. Just whatever you're comfortable with. Um... I started off on paper because digital tablets didn't exist when I started, whoops, sorry, when I started drawing, so I apologize if this is really loud, I'm, I just got to move a bunch of stuff around.
Is there any reason... Oh, are you trying to finish before the games? I would... I don't have to finish before the games today. I don't have to finish the piece. Let me rephrase. I will be finished today before the games. I might, I might need to do some more work tomorrow or something, but... Um, yeah, I plan to watch those. Oh, it didn't start till 2 o'clock. I thought it was noon. Okay, never mind. We got plenty of time. Okay, how many people did I lose in the transition? Oh, no, not really people. Okay. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. So, um... Alright, so now we're in Photoshop. And... I'm actually pretty pleased that it looks about the same. A lot, I, I think 75% for me on my iPad is um, is a pretty good brightness. If you get much brighter than that, I've had issues with um, it coming out too dark um, in Photoshop because you're you're drawing it or you're seeing it. Um, brighter than it actually is. So when you open it up on a like calibrated monitor, then you know, you're not uh you're not getting what you want. Um So I'm trying to think of ways to create more, a little bit more depth in places, maybe. So, um, oh, that didn't work. Let me hold on one second here. Let's see, okay, so, like, I think I want to, like, it kind of looks like they're all, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to gather my thoughts here, it looks like they're all kind of in the same plane, but there's really not a ton of opportunity here to, to change that much, like, you know, Mike could, could, like, push back the, uh, this guy, a little bit the uh, matrix dude I just I'm just put like a really really actually just the almost the exact color of the sky put it um, on top of him so he looks like he's a little bit further back there but he needs some um, some eyes that glow Let's see. You don't hear the high pitch whine from my light because the light's not on right now. <laughs> the uh, I, I went in and adjusted the webcam settings a little bit, and uh, it it looks better on um, when it's full screen. I can definitely tell the difference when the light's on, but for this little shot, it probably doesn't matter that much. Are you guys seeing um, many drop frames here? Uh, my uh, bandwidth seems to be acting up all of a sudden. Hopefully you guys are seeing everything okay. Um, is there a reason you use Dropbox over Google Drive or OneDrive? Or any of them okay for saving your work? Um, I like I just like Dropbox a lot better. I've been using it for a long, long time. I just know exactly how it works. It syncs immediately. Um, I do not like OneDrive at all. I just I don't almost like any of Microsoft's stuff other than Windows. 
Um, but yeah, it's a ton of space and it sinks fast and the other stuff might be cool now. I don't know, but I haven't, it's been so long since I've, um, used that. So I think what I'm going to do next is some glows from the sign. I'm not going to do a ton of these, but just in a couple of places. Um, and you're probably going to see an immediate difference in my line quality. <laughs> you're going to see it go down. I'm probably about to do some whoops uh, what was I gonna say um why is this this thing keeps freezing it's still doing that crap every time I on like every fourth time that I try to um change the um the size of the brush it starts acting weird Let's see, I just want to thank you because after watching your videos, I understood the basics of coloring. Awesome. Thank you very much. Victor, Victor, I don't know how you said it last part. Victor, Victor something. <laughs> just fill it out or sound it out for me. Are you going to do any color holds? Um, I don't know. The only place I can maybe see doing it is for Optimus Prime because he's so far back here. Um, or I could just do like a... Um, let's see if we do this. And just do a... Uh, like get on top of the... On top of the lines and... See what this looks like. This thing won't freeze again. Yeah, I don't think I lost him that much. He looks like he's further back now. Why don't I stream on Twitch? I don't really have a big audience at Twitch. Um, I've tried it a couple of times and you know, four people show up or whatever. <laughs> like, my audience has been built on YouTube, like, from the beginning, like, five years ago, four years ago. So, um, yeah, there's just more people here, so. Um, sorry for so many questions. What is the resolution of the monitor you use? I'm currently considering a 4K monitor for more real estate or an iPad Pro since they're roughly the same price. Um... I have uh, what you guys are actually seeing, and I've I've explained this on other streams, I think. But um, I'll show you real quick. I don't want stock photos, Adobe. So I have a LG ultra wide. So it's shaped like this, 
and so I can't like stream that <laughs> okay it just it looks terrible and doesn't really work so I am running Photoshop in a 1080p sized window about right there and I've got OBS set to just capture you know just that part um, so that the actual full resolution of what I'm working on is the monitor is 2560 by 1440 nope wrong one 3440 by 1440 so it's it's huge um, I don't really use all of it for I mean I can if I it's the only thing I'll usually do that will use the whole space is if I'm coloring like a like a three page scene like I can actually open I can open up Photoshop and put like a page here a page here and a page here and still have room for my menus over here so I can like set all the colors together and it goes pretty quick um, but uh, I mean I don't know like more resolution to me is not that important like I don't like I don't really see a need for a for me personally to get a 4k monitor just because uh, it's just not something that I I really need um, but if there's other stuff you want to do with it, like if you want to game with it or something, then that might be a reason. But I, I wouldn't do it just for Photoshop purposes, you know. Um, Not crazy about that. <laughs> I'm basically wanting to do some bounce light around, or not bounce light, but light from the sign here. Okay, let's see. I want to try something here. I'll try going a little bit darker behind this so that like Mega Man stands out a little bit more. I can probably get a little bit brighter at the top. Yeah, because they don't really need that much darkness to separate them from the background. Yeah, I think it works a little bit better. Thank you so much for taking questions. They're hoping they're hoping clear things up. Awesome. You'll be buying my course soon. Awesome. <laughs> That really helps me keep the channel going because ad revenue on a small, relatively small channel doesn't, doesn't not cut it. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry if I'm not like doing a lot of coloring right now. This is what my process looks like at this point is staring at it trying to see if I can improve it. If I need to do anything. Um do anything more to it. Um I thought about clouds, like really subtle clouds, but like, ah, uh, it's already, you know, the piece itself is 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 a busy piece. There's a lot going on, so I don't want to like go crazy. But I like to try it. I never, you don't ever know if you don't try. So, um, oh, that would give me an excuse to put something behind. Uh, Mega Man here. This cloud brush is so unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's a Noah Noah Bradley brush, I think. And it's just like it's really, really unpredictable. And I don't I don't know enough about Photoshop's brush engine to even like try to fix that. Like I would mess it up. <laughs> and it froze again like every time I try to change the size I've tried switching drivers nothing seems to do anything Yeah, so these are like strategically placed clouds. <laughs> like really strategic. Stop freezing. It's so like I'm kind of painting them out around like Guilty Spark. But adding them a little bit more around Meg Mega Man so he stands out. <laughs> so it's all just it's all fake it's all trickery what brushes are you using now for Photoshop um, this is a what I'm using right this second is just a round brush and overlay mode is um, but uh, I've got several uh, Boro Dante brushes. I've got a lot of a whole bunch of uh, Kyle Webster's brushes. Um, I got most of these are just really simple brushes that are just round brushes. Um, and this was painted entirely in Procreate for the most part, so they're all default Procreate brushes. Um, The only part now that I'm just like not super pleased with is like uh, well, I can't why isn't that working? There we go. Like this little area right here, I feel like is not quite clear enough. So I'm gonna start trying to create some separation here. Oh, that's a light. I need a shadow layer. Hold on, there we go. So, like, I'm adding some shadows behind C3PO on that chromey guy from Battlestar Galactica so that he stands up a little bit better. I'm actually going to do that a little bit darker. And 
same thing with uh, the robot behind him from Danger Rule Robinson, whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. I don't remember. So yeah, now we're getting a little bit better um, distance between these guys. Yeah, like all these guys are chrome. <laughs> like everybody's chrome almost. So like, yeah, it's interesting. But it's been fun though. I've had to like learn. I feel like I've had to learn some new stuff here. I'm really glad that I made this layer or had my flatter make this layer <laughs> so I can just grab one character at the same time. Yep, that just area just needed more contrast. That's what that was. So we'll keep that up here actually. I'm liking the way it looks better already. And someone asked me yesterday on the stream about like why realism doesn't always matter. This is a textbook example of why <laughs> it doesn't. Like these shadows aren't really realistic, but they're necessary to like make this read properly. She looks a little too green to me. All this yellow and blue make green stuff, so I'm going to warm that up. More red, yellow, and more red. There we go. Yeah, like this dude behind Johnny Five is like the same color as Johnny Five. <laughs> Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. This one. Normally I don't work on this many layers, but for pinups like this that are this complicated it can help. And I actually wanna try just increasing the contrast on Johnny Five. Brighten him up some. better. So it's just like a big puzzle here, you know, and as soon as you change one thing, there's something else comes along and you have to make that work too. <laughs> This dog's like the same color as this guy, so almost darken him up some. Johnny Five looks very metallic now, <laughs> much more metallic. All right, let's see. I think we're getting there. Um. The so one I think one last round of I want to do some some more I don't want to do like I don't want to go crazy with flares but like in a couple of places where it might make sense. I could flare like everybody <laughs> you know like little bits of glare
Like this guy is just like completely chrome. So he needs to glow a little bit. And same thing with old uh, C3PO here. Like, cause he would just, he would shine like the bat signal <laughs> in the sun like this. So. Bender, I glowed him already. I've got everything else I think on here like I want. How do you distinguish between whether a piece is bad drawing coloring or part of a style? Man, that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know. Like, there. I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel like you can tell the difference between. A, like, well, I don't know. Like one guy that comes to mind who's who I'm a huge fan of. It's like Umberto Ramos. Like, he's got this really crazy, cartoony, exaggerated style that I absolutely love. Like, it's it's very comic booky and cartoony, and but the likenesses are all still there, and everybody looks like themselves. I don't. It's it's magic to me. Okay. Um, some people can't stand it. You know, I don't think there's a right answer to that question. You know, um, you know, it's 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 tough. It's a tough thing to try to say. Because it's not always objective, you know. Um, or at least, I mean, I don't think it's objective anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like I said, that's a that's a tough one. What do you guys think? Anything obvious that I have missed or... It's such a, it's such a different kind of piece what I'm used to doing where you've got, you know, a single focal point or two. <laughs> and so, you know, there's, there's so much, there's so many characters on the screen and you don't, you want to get everybody there, you know, they're due here because um, I mean if, if this was any other piece um, and it's not a knock on the piece it's just the nature of this sort of print where you where you've got you know you want to uh, because you know the fans gonna be like oh look in here here's this guy and this so-and-so from this show I used to like and like you know fans are gonna really be digging around in it and looking at it and um, so like you know I want to do it justice and not have um, you know too much in the way of, you know, non-local color here, basically. You know, these guys are pretty much all the, um, you know, the color that, whoops, are, are the color that, you know, that they are, like, on, on whatever. I'm just putting some shadows in this grass back here. Um, 
But if it was any other piece, you know, I would, you know, say the sign's the focal point. Then, you know, you could do something like, um, like if I take like a, like a vibrance layer or something and, you know, turn it down everywhere except, you know, the place like in the center of the screen. Something like that, you know. But like, they're all pretty desaturated now except for the sign. Um, so that's, you know, it's not as fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna call this and send it over to the to the show and see um, see what they think. Um, for me, this glow on the sign extends too far out on the lower right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, let's erase that. Get on the right layer. Yeah. Because anytime I watch these streams, there's always like, there's always that one thing in the background that you're like w waiting on me to fix. And <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to call it. So, um, any other questions before we wrap this up? Zoom up a little bit. You guys can see this a little better. A lot of detail. <laughs> Matt Garvey missed the whole thing. Oh, you know, Matt. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, yeah, Matt, you don't you don't get input on this, Matt. You haven't. You can't just roll in here at eleven fifty five. Matt's my internet friend. I can talk to him that way. Any particular reason not using textures on this? Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Clutter. <laughs> clutter, clutter, clutter. Uh, it, it would be too much, I think. Um, I mean, the only place... I mean, the grass, maybe you could throw something there, but not, probably not. I, this one is... Uh, this one has enough in it. <laughs> For a big piece like this, do you think it's important to properly detail everything? Um, yes, yes. Um, you know, and you got to define properly detail, I guess. You know, you got to think about the fact that, you know, this is going to be printed 11 by 17, which on my monitor, so like that's about comic book sized. So like, do I have a. Oh, I actually have a ruler. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just gonna I'm gonna blow this up in Photoshop for just a second. You guys can't see all this. Um, okay, so it's like right there. Hold on one second. Uh, it's not even that big. Right about. Whoa! What just happened? Okay, it's right about there. So if I pull this back, um, this is about the size that's going to be on paper. Okay, so are the the details enough for this size? You know what I mean? Um, that's really the most important thing. Um, 
you know, so it doesn't have to, you know, if this was going to be printed larger or there was going to be, you know, if the whole piece was just this right here, then I could go in and make some more details on it. But, um, you know, for this, I and mean, what I've done might even be overkill for this, but I, you know, this is a show that I really enjoy and, um, you know, I want to do the, uh, I wanted it to be nice and detailed and, and I know, I know there's fans of a lot of these, uh, people that are going to be there and I, I wanted to, you know, do them justice basically. So, um, but yeah, that's, um, that's what I would uh, do. So, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, I am going to up, I'm going to have the recording up on YouTube eventually. Um, I'm going to cut it together with yesterday and just do one big, uh, one big thing. So it'll be like four hours long or something, probably, for those of you that are insane enough to want to watch that. And then, um, I'm kidding. I'm, I would, I'm in, one of those insane people that watch people paint for four hours. Um, and I'll also do like a time lapse, probably. So. Are Eva and Big Hero's colors too gray or metal? Um, maybe? Can we say that? I mean, there's such a narrow range of, of colors on Eva. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like the darkest dark on, like she just doesn't reflect anything almost, like the white part's like a matte finish. So in order to get any kind of contrast, you know. But yeah, I can brighten them up a little bit. You know, I, I don't want him like unnecessarily standing out too much. Um, but I think that works okay. But yeah, good idea. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Um, actually, right this second, because um, I because <laughs> I, I scheduled it for noon, um, there's a new video up on the YouTube channel um, explaining the new Procreate course that came out, um, or that or I, it came out, like it just came out on its own, um, that I put out uh, yesterday, I think I started out. Um, it's, uh, you can watch the video, it's not a coloring course, it's, it's more of a beginner's digital art course, so... Um, after I'm done here, if you guys can, you want to check that out, you can. Um, but uh, if you've already got, I mentioned this in the YouTube video, if you already have my Photoshop courses, you won't really learn a whole lot about coloring. This is more of a digital process workflow, you know, for people that are new to digital or, you know, just, um, you know, they got an iPad and, and they heard you can draw on it and don't know where to start. It's kind of that's my audience <laughs> for that. So uh, a lot of you guys it might it might be too elementary for. Um, uh, that if you've watched my channel for a long time and you're familiar with getting around applications, digital art apps, then, you know, it might be uh, too elementary. But there's, there's, there's a lot of tips and tricks and stuff. So even if you're familiar with it, you'll, you might learn something. But, um, yeah. Uh, you should probably add some highlights to the underside of the Black Lion's wing. Other than that, it's amazing. Uh, that's a good point. I actually didn't do anything in on the in the shadows over there. This is why I keep you guys around. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Why are you not working? There we go. And it froze again. I I don't know if it's the tablet, if it's the pen, if it's the driver, but every time I resize it almost it starts acting up. Oh, I didn't select him. Thought I did. There we go.
keep it simple. Uh, other than that, amazing. Thank you. Hey, your beginner art tutorial just uploaded. How you do that? <laughs> Did you ask that question before I said the answer? No, it was uh, it was scheduled. Um, so, and hello, Keeman. Yeah, I schedule most of my videos now. Um, because they get done at weird times, and you know, I don't want to put a. I don't want to put a video um, out at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> All right, well, I don't see any more questions. So thank you guys for coming. And uh, hopefully do this again soon. If I have any tweaks or anything, I'll uh, I'll try to post it before and after, and you guys can check that out. So thank you. Have a good one.